This is my attempt at a Bannerlord, Asurai only world conquest. A challenge where I can only use the troops, weapons and armour from the Asurai troop tree. Companions, spouse and clans we will invite must be of Asurai heritage. Death is enabled and Iron Man mode is on, so we will have to play on regardless how the story unfolds, win or lose. We are adding more rules this run, no smithing and no bow. I will rely on the income from trade goods, raiding villages and selling the captured loot from our fallen enemies, but with no bow I will be much less capable on the battlefield, using only small stacks of throwing weapons at a reduced range. This is the story of Camel of the Wraith, the Easterling King from Middle-earth that would become Ringwraith at the hand of Sauron, but that's in another universe. We start our story at the edge of the asteroid desert and journey to Sanala. We didn't even make it to the gate before our ex-wife Yana married herself into the Western Empire. It's only the second day. I defeat a band of four looters and I chase down another group of seven, cutting them down with ease. I soon find a third group of nine and decide to engage. I ran out of javelins to try to swap it with a polearm I saw on the ground. It had been a while since I last played and I forgot what the pick up and mount horse key was, so I accidentally kicked aimlessly until I got struck down, becoming a prisoner, day 4. I recover quickly and attempted to clear a nearby hideout. Fighting through the camp was easy but the desert bandit boss proved to be a superior fighter and got the better of me, becoming a prisoner once more. Once I recover from those wounds, I try again. I take some heavy hits early but limp on. When I face the bandit boss, I am in no state to fight and quickly go down again. We've had a bit of bad luck recently, but I don't feel like the run is going terribly. However, when I hit next page, I'm confronted with the reality that actually, that was the end of the run. Dead. Defeated. 14 days into a run and I've already died. No wife or heirs, I haven't even met anyone in the world yet. I suppose that is the official end of the run, but in an effort to make a more interesting video, here is the birth of Kamul II, who in my opinion is better. We start off in the safety of the arena this time. In one round I started with a bow. That is against the rules of this run so I drop it straight away and fight with the sword I was given. We win our first tournament and we're rewarded with a tier 3 helmet that we can use. Venturing out, my first fight is with 7 looters. After defeating them, I try on 8 desert bandits. These are what we will train against to springboard our combat skills as high as possible, whilst also getting better renown for fighting solo with them. I round up three groups of them and fight in a 1v12. I'm not worried as 11 of them are shieldless infantry. On our journey, we have picked up some trade goods for cheap. Selling them and the loot from these battles brought our funds up to 10,000 dinars. Cautiously, I approached my first bandit hideout and took down the bandit boss with a javelin to the face, bringing him down into the dirt right next to Camel the First. This act of justice brought us up to Clan Tier 1 on summer 20, 1084. I recruit our first companions, Brutal Prevus, That British Mo, Luke and Heyo, but I want to remain solo until Clan Tier 2, so I send all four out on caravan runs which will boost our income and start training their party skills. I name NPCs after channel members, and these are just a few of them. We will meet more as the story unfolds and we will see if they aided the realm or hindered it. Look out for them in the comments below and if you want to be involved in future videos and contribute to the channel, become a member now. After more fights and tournaments, I reach Clan Tier 2 on Winter 12, 1084 and start recruiting. Soon, we have a full party of 82 troops and look for more suitable foes. The Tanya and the Western Empire are at war and Marinath had fallen to the Empire. It has now been taken over by rebels. We declare war and participate in our first battle in an 84 vs 62. We won the fight, but a staggering 48 of our men died. I have to go back to the desert to recruit and return with more troops. I line up for our second battle, an 88 versus 104, winning again but losing 33 men. I am not yet used to the Asurai troops and at their current low levels are mainly using cloth for armour. We meet our next companion, Ein Mutton, while restocking. And when I was raiding a village, I must have taken my eyes off the screen as a party of 145 challenges us. We have not done well with combat so far. The battle will be in a village and I'm hoping the closed space will negate their 49 cavalry. We are able to take down 70 of theirs but they wipe us out entirely, putting us in chains and becoming a prisoner. 
We are released when the rebel town is recruited by Kaladog and joins Batania, thus ending the feud. Back in the desert to restock, in the autumn of 1085, I meet the noble Lady Zanua. She is a suitable wife, even though she is 18 and I am 50. It's a game, don't worry about it. Every option in our first meeting gives a 100% pass rate, which grants us a second date. This was a critical success, and she accepts our marriage proposal. I meet with her father, Hashan, who insists I must pay 136 denars for the wedding. And on the 10th day of winter, 1085, I marry my queen, Zanua. Having a loving and supportive wife encouraged more great deeds from our hero, Kamal II, as he reached Tournament Master, netting us an extra one renown per day, and hit our first 100,000 denars. We also found an unaffiliated minor clan, the Beni Zilal, roaming the plains of Landia, and decide to strike down with war upon them. We have 107, and they have 81, and savor our first military victory so far, having suffered only four deaths. Another fight on Winter 17, 1085, this time with zero deaths, and we reached Clan Tier 3. With achievements like this, it was only a matter of time before Zanua fell pregnant. We welcome our first child, Kamul III, into the family, and picked up our next companion, Keichi, and sent her out to run a party. After training our troops on the Beni Zilal, and having a party of better quality soldiers, it's now time to look for bigger opponents. We need to boost our renown to reach Clan Tier 4 faster, and I see that the Northern Empire have taken heavy hits from the Kuzade. I'm on the lookout for rebel towns to take for myself, in or very close to the Asrai Desert, so this kingdom on their knees is perfect, as they're far away from our main goals, so it won't be a risk when we have our own properties, and we can take advantage of their current weakened state. So on the 12th day of spring, 1086, we declare war and start the attacks. Our first clash is 136 versus 181, where five of ours fell. Heyo's caravan got attacked, but he managed to escape. We called him back and sent him out again to run a party. We raided village after village, and soon Zanua gave birth to our second child, Kamul IV. Despite our persistent disruption, the Northern Empire take back Mazia from the Kuzate invaders, and I got caught by three smaller patrols. I tried running, but their pursuit remained unwavering and unyielding. They caught us, and intended to serve the Emperor Lukon's justice. It was a 129 versus 248, but we are no longer a party of poorly organised rebel. A flawlessly executed battle resulted in another great victory, suffering only 11 deaths. Success on the battlefield rewarded us with the Mounted Patrols perk, the first of two bonuses that will each grant a minus 50% chance of escape to enemy lords we capture. It is now spring 1087, and the Northern Empire have lost Mazia to the Kuzate once more. The Asterai have found their way north to Marinath, Vlandia are spreading into Sturgia, and the Southern Empire have taken Hassenfolk from the Asterai. These migrations do not last long though. Marinath rebels, and Hassenfolk follows. This is my moment. Close to my homeland for recruitment, and a town that I won't get a loyalty penalty for, as I share the culture. We force march for five days and set up our first siege camp at Hassenfolk on the first day of summer, 1087. We have a full party of 147, and inside the town there are 395 defenders. We starve out the garrison as Varsheg falls to rebels too, reversing the advancement of all kingdoms back. By the 17th day of summer, with both walls cracked, we sack the city. 144 versus 220. We lost eight men, but we can now call this town home. A few more fights bring us up to Clan Tier 4, and on the third day of winter, 1087, we start our own kingdom, the Haradrim. Our first task is to recruit and fill Hassenfolk with as many troops as possible to help with defence, and for fast replenishment when we need to refill troops. I call Heyo and Keichi to form an army to help with this task and get to work. We collect our next companion, Gozorbo, and start spending all our influence setting up the policies that will help our administration when the Southern Empire declares war. I am all the way across the desert at Sanala. I didn't even make it to the next town and the siege starts. I don't have any influence left to apply for peace to save the town, so all I can do is watch the number of wounded soldiers increase. We were just too far away, and I lose my home. We starve out the 283 garrison and fight in a 505 versus 166 and reclaim our home, but the second we step outside, rebels take over. This may be the first time a town has rebelled against me in all my playthroughs, but we turn around and take the town for the third time, and Zanua gives birth to our third child, Kamul V. We go out to recruit again, 
and before long, an army of over 1,000 starts preparing to siege the town. I do not want to lose it a fourth time, so wait for the last possible moment to join the fight. The defence is reduced to 61 defenders and I strike. We are outnumbered in a 539 versus 777. I tried using the terrain to our advantage, but there was just too many of them. We took out 245, but they took out 529, completely wiping my army and taking me prisoner. On the 8th day of summer, 1088, I escape. I reluctantly make peace with the Southern Empire and face the reality that we have lost our only property. As we marched north to raid villages of the Northern Empire for income, Mutton's caravan got attacked and she is now a prisoner. Her captors ask for 240 denars to release her, and I accept. She joins our party. Now it's the autumn. It's the Southern Empire and the Cusate that appear to be the strongest factions. The Southern Empire had ventured as far as Razi, but in the winter of 1088, rebels took it over, giving us another opportunity. We journeyed straight there, but were a millisecond too late, and the Southern Empire got there first. I was not going to let this stop us, so when the town was recaptured, I declared war and struck down on the 230 defenders with my 430 men, losing only one soldier. In an attempt to start growing my empire, I tried recruiting my wife's clan over to mine. I speak to her father, Hashan, but he refuses. That British Mo's caravan is captured, so we pay 289 to release him, and on the 21st day of summer, 1089, with a full army of 603, we march on the Southern Empire to kick them from the desert. Tamna Castle, Shabal Zimmer Castle, and Hassenfolk fall after only two weeks, and on the 14th of autumn, we complete our mission. To avoid rebellions due to mismatched culture and to encourage easy recruitment, I want to first conquer the Asarai and replace them as their king before venturing out too far. We do however go as far as Danistica to create a buffer zone for the desert, but lost Shebal Zumar castle in the process. I have been suffering a lot more crashes than previous runs. I thought it's probably due to the Lord of the Rings flag pack mod I've been using, so I remove my Eye of Sauron banner just in case and look at the other ones offered in the base game. This one looks remarkably like the Grond, so I swap it in. I retake Shibel Zuma Castle as Danistica is under attack. We make it there in time and repel them. I decide to take another castle from the Empire to create more space between us and hopefully to make the upcoming peace deal more lucrative, but a large army marches past en route to Danistica, so I break the siege of Lavenia Castle and give chase. The army is led by my ex-wife from the Empire run, the Lady Dabana, so this is personal. We fight her in a 906 versus 705. It's a flawless battle as we lose only four soldiers and take her prisoner. Shibel Zuma Castle is under attack again, but fortunately we are nearby. We are outnumbered almost two to one, but I see that 250 of them are recruits and they only have 180 cavalry. This is a great opportunity to take 12 lords out in one foul swoop, so engage. We completely obliterated their ranks, but at the cost of 124 of our own. Taking out this many lords at once will help cripple the enemy advancement and harassment of my new land, giving me space to focus on my own conquest. Pravis is taken prisoner, and we ask him to join our party. We take Lavenia Castle as Shibal Zuma and Danistica are attacked. Exhausted by this endless war, I sign for peace, taking 829 denars per day. The war helped bring our throwing skill up to 250. We now have a chance to penetrate shields. We also reach Plantia 5 on the 11th day of spring, 1090. We get an extra companion slot, but we have already recruited every Asurai companion so far. We spent this downtime recruiting and organizing our new properties. It's not long, however, before the next war starts, this time with the Asurai. On our way to Razi, it is besieged by a large army of over 1,000. Before long, it amasses to 1,200, so I break in to fight this behind the walls, losing 22 men. We defended our town and took Hashan, my wife's father, prisoner during the siege, so speak to him and ask him to join our kingdom. He accepts, becoming the first clan to fight alongside us. Pressing on, we take Sahel Castle and start the siege of Hubya. Sahel Castle is under attack, but we press on with our new siege. We take the town and race to save the castle, but we do not make it in time. Now Hubya is under attack, we charge at them in the field with 902 versus 990, taking all of them prisoner, including Tace of the Banu Kill. We offer him his freedom in exchange for his loyalty and he accepts. He came with Sahil Castle too, which was very convenient. 
Over the next month, in the spring of 1091, we had taken Icarus, Jamea Castle, Medina Castle, Kassira, and Asgar. We recruited Adas with the Banu Saran and Surik of the Banu Karaz to join our kingdom. The Asarai are down to the last town, so I accept the peace offer, receiving 2.1 thousand dinars a day, as I want to recruit the remaining clans before destroying a kingdom. This is the first time I am playing in version 1.2, which added kingdom destruction, and I'm not sure exactly how that works. We recruit Akar and the Banu Ruwaid for 231,000 dinars, bringing our total funds down to 339,000, and hit charm 250, which grants us another additional companion slot. Now there are two empty slots, as there still hasn't been any new companions drop in. It's lucky we're not playing this run as Sturger though, who only have three. On the sixth day of summer, 1091, King Durthert of Landia declares war on us. This is perfect, as they had started their own conquest of the asteroid desert, and we now have permission to clean them out of it. We quickly find the king in an army of 1,367, marching with intent to take Asgar from me. They must have just declared war with the Northern Empire though, as two days later they backtrack and start marching to take Legeta from them. Currently, Vlandia have the highest troop strength in the kingdom, with 10,700. Second place being the Western Empire, with 8,200. We take Ukpa Castle and simultaneously attack Barahil Castle and Engbalik Castle with Surik's army. We go as far as Koyaz and extinguish the Vlandian flame from the desert after 30 days of war. A new companion has dropped in, Griff Gaming. We travel to Epicrotia to claim him, where I have the most intense fight with that British Mo at the tournament. The Asarai declared war, so I marched for their final stronghold. In the siege camp, Zanua gave birth to another child, Kamul VI. We fight the last fight of the Asarai and take Sanala from them, and on the 19th day of winter, 1091, the Asarai are no more. Vlandia offer peace, to which I decline. We venture out, and with 774 men, we try to prey on a smaller army of 289. We could not catch up with them, and surprisingly, we got caught up with another army of 587 and some escorting parties. We were unable to outrun them, and was confronted with 15 angry lords commanding 1,087 men. There's a large amount of enemy cavalry, 336, rivaling our own 239. The battle was a mess, more men fell than was necessary, and the entire battle was fought in 2 frames per second, which only made the struggle worse. We came out victorious, but lost 189 soldiers. It is now the 5th day of summer, 1092 and all the remaining Asurai clans are destroyed. The Banu Hulyan, Banu Abbas, Banu Atij, and Banu Samal all fell as none of them could join another kingdom in time. As the player, you cannot recruit clans that were part of a destroyed kingdom and that haven't found home in another kingdom. We take Charas, and even after a hundred days of war, Vlandia still hold the most troop strength in the entire realm. We take Thrakthare Castle and Usank Castle, where I have the most cinematic siege I've ever played. Just watch this for a moment straight out of a movie. We receive reports that Charis is under attack and five 1,500 Vlandians in camp. We break in, which cost 88 men, and defended our city with 750 troops. We destroy their siege tower, and they flee before even breaching the gate. We lost a further 20 men in the battle, but repelled this huge force with grace. This huge victory against the Vlandians helped tip our finances over 1 million dinars for the first time this run. We have over 200 spare places for troops, so quickly go back home to resupply. While we're there, Awa and her family take Veron Castle. I also notice Uzank Castle is under siege, but I won't turn around without filling my army first. When I do return with 812 troops, I had lost all three castles we had taken. With unwavering focus, I waste no time and march to reclaim the lost lands. In the spring of 1093, I had taken Usank, Thrakthare, and also Sargo. We are nine years into the game, and all three Empire factions still seem to be thriving. Normally by this point, one of them has been defeated, and another clearly dominating. They are the top three factions after me, and each have the same number of troops. Western Empire have 7,748, Northern Empire have 7,730, and the Southern Empire have 7,184. We took Verin Castle and marched for Marinath. 
Akar's army is sieging Abkoma Castle, and Batania lose Remtoil Castle to the Northern Empire. In the Siege of Marinath, I drop Vlandians like I drop frames. Luckily, I didn't need to do much melee combat myself, but Zanua was so impressed by my catapult skills that she gave birth to Kamul VII. Akar lost the siege, and now Sargo is attacked. It's a 980 versus 969, and my laptop is fighting this battle like a PowerPoint presentation and is on the verge of crashing. I do my best to command the troops. I only lose 21 soldiers, and now look for my next target. But then the inevitable happened. My computer crashed, and the next eight hours of footage got corrupted due to several crashes over several videos. I'm not sure if it's the 1.2 updates or the character reload mod that I'm using to rename characters, but when I finally got readable footage, an in-game year had gone by, and this was the map. We had taken Abkoma Castle, but have since lost it. Sargo was lost and retaken several times. Batania took Remtoil Castle, and we have conquered all Vlandian properties south of the Great River. And we hit our first 2 million Danars. It has been 240 days of war with Vlandia, and I'm back in the Asarai Desert to restock. We are the strongest faction with 10,000 total troop strength. Second place is the Southern Empire with 9.3 thousand. Vlandia are fifth out of the remaining eight with 5.5 thousand, and they are down to the last 11 properties. We're ready to resume the fighting. We have a full army of 833 men composed of 313 infantry, 150 ranged, 212 cavalry, and 158 mounted archers. More than half of our army are top tier troops and are ready to end this war. We return to find Talivel Castle under attack, so go to investigate. It's two large armies totaling over 1,000. The siege is in progress, and when we get there, we line up with 984 versus 974. This is the shortest, yet bloodiest battle I've ever faced. A landslide victory as we suffer only 14 deaths and both Flandian armies are obliterated. The success of this battle grants us leadership 250, which allows us to lead an extra party. So I send that British Mo to lead the vanguard. Our new army size is 961. Shortly after, I reach Scouting 250. There is now a 0% chance of prisoner lords escaping. Summer, 1094. The Southern Empire and the Cusate are having a power struggle as both kingdoms have 8.6 thousand total troop strength, while Batania has 5.8. Northern Empire has 5.5, Sturgia has 5.3, Vlandia has 5.2, and Western Empire have 4.9. We find King Durthard in the field and fight in a 945 versus 499. Another flawless victory as we lost only three men and take him prisoner, bringing our noble prisoner count to 56. By the autumn, with their king as my prisoner, we had taken Preven, Drapend Castle, Verisan Castle, and pushed as far as Ox Hall. We had lost and retaken Abkoma Castle already, but is now under siege again, but Akar's army sweeps in and saves the day. We take Ormafad Castle, where we reach Clantis 6 and deny the Vlandians peace. It has been a fierce war, but they are reduced to the last 5 properties, with only 2,300 men to defend them. With no reason to delay, we launch our final assault, taking Ostakon, Turby Castle, Callius Castle, Rovolt, where I reach throwing 275, and finally, after 319 days of war, Novyansk Castle. The 10th day of spring, 1095 the day Vlandia was no more. We ended up with 74 noble prisoners in my party alone. Now we have 12,900 troop strength, and in second place is the Cusate with 8,000 who have obviously been winning their fight against the Southern Empire, who now have 7.8 thousand. Batania has suffered the worst with fighting as they went from 4th place to 7th with 4,200 troops. Our new maximum army size is 1,070, and in the summer of 1095, we declared war on our new enemy, the Batanians. Akar and his army kicked off the war by a large field victory where he takes 12 Batanian lords as prisoner, bringing the inflicted casualties to over 1,000 already. He then ceremoniously joins us in the flagship siege of Pen Canuck in a ridiculous 2,199 versus 497, and without surprise, we take the town. Akar takes Aster Castle, and we take Danglanis, where we capture our ex-wife Tors. Or is it Tertia? Someone please let me know in the comments. We lost Lanok Hen Castle, Sturger took Remtoil Castle, and now Abkoma is under siege. At this moment, I spot King Durthert, and I see he has bent the knee to Batania. 
When I arrive at Abcoma Castle and see the small force attacking it, I notice another ex-wife, the Lady Yana, is amongst the ranks. I see that she married into the Fen Morkar and thus got her Batanian citizenship via the partner visa. I married her in a previous video but she's already forgotten me, so I take her prisoner and introduce her to my other ex-wife. Batania had taken Legeta, but there are only 5 properties remaining. Come winter we had taken Lanoken Castle, Druimor Castle, Carbenzeth, Pendrek Castle where Akar died in battle, and there hasn't been any companions drop in and none have died. I still have members waiting, so I named the clan leader of the Banirawaid after the next member in line, Matthew Knoll. Sturger declares war on us as we take Sienan. Now only one more Batania town left. Matthew Knoll creates an army and joins us in the final siege of Batania in a 1811 vs 604. We take the town and end the war after 61 days. On the second day of spring, 1096, Batania is no more. The war did not take its toll on us, we still have 982 battle ready troops, about 100 less than the maximum, so we will not restock. We march now for Sturger. Sturger, our last place in terms of total troop strength. They have 4,100, whereas we have 15,800. This should be a short war. The Northern Empire had started taking Sturgeon real estate and are now the main presence there. Sturger still occupy Remtoil Castle, so I turn to strike there first, but Matthew Knoll beats me to it. He takes it and we go on to take Ustakal Castle. Sienan is under siege. I trusted Matthew Knoll to chase away the assault force, but he lost the fight and gets taken prisoner with six other lords, and then the town is lost. We finish up our siege of Revel, then take Varsheg, claiming them for our own. Our allies take Sienan, but gets overthrown by rebels, so take it again when Varsheg is under attack. Zenua gives birth to our sixth child, this is Kamul the Eighth. We saved Varsheg from the 381 trying to take it, when the remaining Batanian clans that hadn't found the kingdom yet are destroyed. On this list include High King Kaladog, Durthurt the Batanian vassal, and our once beloved ex-wife, Tors. Tersha? We took Balgard and gave it to Matthew Knoll. He got gifted a channel membership during a live stream by another viewer. I hope he watches this video, I don't even know if they're a fan. He, he's getting a lot of screen time. Thanks to editing, you don't know this but the last 7 recordings all ended in crashes and only some of the footage was saved. The rest got corrupted. Honestly, this almost made me quit the run and I had to have a long think about the direction of the channel, but as I had already sunk so much time into this, I decided to continue, desperately trying anything to make it run better. This isn't Bannerlord's fault as the previous runs did not have this issue. I work off a laptop and it must be something to do with that. When we get back to Calradia, it's autumn 1096. Sturger are reduced to their final two properties and the Western Empire had declared war on us. Strategically, they would have been our next target anyway, so I keep them open. The war is only three days old at this point. Finishing off our Sturgeon Crusade, we take Vladek Castle, pushing them back to their final town, Teal, where we defeat the last stand of Sturger. Autumn 21, 1096, and another kingdom falls. By the time we return west, Emperor Garius had already taken Legeta off us with five prisoners. We found him in the field and lined up against him. Incredibly, it was a 655 versus 655. They had more cavalry than I did, but we did not hold back. We struck him down, losing 83 men, and I took 11 noble prisoners. The success of that battle brought us up to 10 million Danars, the most I've ever acquired. We have, however, dropped to 613 troops. We have fought the entire Batania and Sturger conquest with these men. I return to the desert to fully restock. While I'm here, and money isn't a problem, I issue my companions with better gear, all tier 6. At this point, I realise a blunder. I'm supposed to only use equipment from the Aserai pool, and yet javelins, which I've been using this entire time, are not used by any troop from the Aserai troop tree. I swap them out immediately for Jareeds. I spent time to check every troop in every faction and made a database in my discord to make this easier, and yet I'm still making errors. We now have a full army of 1095, all of which are tier 4 or above. The Western Empire have grown to 15 properties now after taking Sienan, Remtoil Castle and Verin Castle from us. Matthew Knoll attempts to take Remtoil but fails. We take Onika Castle and Zionika and see Hashan, Zonua's father, trying to take Remtoil. He fails. The Western Empire now have 14 of our own lords as their prisoner. By the summer of 1097, we had taken Jalmaris. Our kingdom is dominating Calradia with 18,000 troops. Southern Empire are second with 10,600. 
Northern Empire are next with 10,100. The Cusate are fourth with 7,700. And our enemy, the Western Empire, are limping on in last place with 5,200. While at the siege camp of Amatatis, I noticed Matthew Knoll escape his captors after his defeat earlier. After breaking the walls, we confront the 804 defenders with our 1,032. I've not spoken about the Asari troops much, but they are absolutely beautiful. Every unit has a stack of throwing weapons, and as soon as we get in range, they present a death volley, ripping shields down and connecting to bone. Wonderful stuff. We took the town with 24 losses, leaving the Western Empire with 11 properties. Jalmaris is in trouble, so we go to help, but arrive too late and lose it. It was taken by two armies, but they outmaneuver us and I cannot catch them. We are vastly superior in size and skill, so go ahead and retake Jalmaris. I didn't want to let the two armies go freely, so I baited them to both siege their lost town and I caught them in a 981 versus 807, another beautiful battle where we lose 32 men. We are now in possession of 55 Lord prisoners, and they now must defend their final properties with 3,200 troops. Looking at the map, on the 9th of autumn, 1097, the anniversary date of this war, Sienan is lost, but we had taken Rote and made some other advancements such as Remsoil Castle and Hurtigia Castle. With the help from allies, Carith besieges Verin Castle. The rest of the war was met with no opposition. With 2,300 men defending eight properties, they were obviously stretched too thin. Legeta, Thraktere Castle, Aristocris Castle, Otricia, Garontor Castle are all next. The Northern Empire took Sienan, leaving Tubalis Castle. Matthew Knoll rounds up an army and again ceremoniously joins us in the final stand of the Western Empire, a 1,680 versus 542. The war took 112 days and with 59 prisoners launched the final assault. Winter 16, 1097 and the Fifth Kingdom falls. When the war was won, we were back near the desert with 729 troops out of a maximum 1,100, so we will pick up the extra 400 troops before deciding who our next victim is. Still, there are no new wanderers. I didn't expect all of mine to survive this long either. As I still have members to name, I decided to do something drastic. The Northern Empire, Emperor Lucon, died in 1086 and passed leadership to his son, Assyrian. I rename him Frederick Jensen. Head of the Cusates, Monchag Khan, is now called Jonathan Abrams, and our biggest threat and channel nemesis, Empress Rugea of the Southern Empire, is now Princess Playtherade. Soon, we have the most troops in the world combined, a staggering 23,600. Second place is the Southern Empire with 10,200, third, the Northern Empire with 6,800, and in last place, the Cusate with 5,700. Being the brave and heroic nation we are, we pick on the weakest of them and start a war with the Cusate. Although I've already got mixed up with the new names and accidentally declared war on the Northern Empire, I apologised profusely and immediately asked for peace, declaring war on the real enemy, the Cusates. Spring 1098. Our first military action was to take Odok in the decisive clash that saw 1,107 face off against 575, resulting in an outstanding victory, sacrificing only two men. We march onwards to Erzina Castle and Akalat, taking them from them too. Right outside the walls is an army led by Jonathan Abrams. We slightly outnumber them, but they have 287 mounted archers in their army of 836. I am nervous, but cannot grant them passage. Plus, I'm eager to meet my new enemy face to face. It turned out to be an easy win, losing 39 troops, and I got the last kill, which always makes me happy. Jonathan Abrams was able to evade capture, so we will see him again. We press on, taking Samira Castle and then Hacken Castle. The Qs8 are taking an absolute beating as another unknown group are sieging Balticand on the other side of the map. This will surely be a quick war. We find once more Jonathan Abrams hiding behind his castle walls at Chakeend. This was one of our best sieges, totally exploiting the weaknesses of the broken walls. We lost a further 32 men, but this time we took the Khan as prisoner. Turns out it's the Southern Empire fighting the Cusate, as they won the fight of Balticand, and it looks like they're taking Uzek Castle now too. This will help speed this war along, but we will have to return here when we take on the Princess Playtherade later. We take Autengard, and sure enough, the Southern Empire triumph again at Usek Castle. 
Kimley Castle and Makeb are next to fall in our conquest when we see a familiar face, Debana, our ex-wife from the Empire Only Conquest. We've fought and defeated her once already this one when she was wearing different colours, but it now seems she is married into the Nomadic Horde. She's raiding one of our new villages, so I do not hesitate to defeat her a second time. We vastly outnumber her with 815 against her 224, and we suffer no casualties, taking her prisoner once again. We take Tepe's castle and see that Balticum has rebelled against its weak southern empire government. I seize the opportunity and liberate the rebel town for ourselves. On the fourth day of spring, 1099, the last two properties are claimed, Dina Castle and Kesar Castle. The kingdom of the Kuze is no more. Selling the loot from our conquest, we reach 20 million denars. We recruit again before deciding our next move. We go through every village and garrison, selecting only tier 4 troops and above. We go to the last village to reach our army limit of 1,120, when in perfect timing, Princess Platerade summons us to war. We are more than ready. 29,600 troops versus 14,600. 25 fiefs to liberate and the war will be won. This declaration of war comes at the same time we hear that the leader of the Cusate, Jonathan Abrams, has died. We are marching for Poros. Matthew Knoll is already at the walls of Sestadane Castle, but across the map and just out of reach we see Urzana Castle and Makeb are under attack. Our conquests are victorious and we advance as far as Lycaron. Back east we lost Balticund and Makeb, with Tepez Castle now under attack. Poros is besieged and we find that it is Princess Playthrade making the biggest mistake of her reign. We fight her in a 1331 versus 677. Three of ours died and that British Mo captures her. We start making coordinated attacks with Surik and Tarik with their armies and take Akisa Castle, Urzana Castle and Odrissia Castle simultaneously. Then take Vostrum and Onira. The Southern Empire are not having as much luck. Balticund, Makeb and Argonon have each rebelled independently, as well as Omar, although I think that may have been part of the Northern Empire. Spring 1100. 15 properties left to get. Tarek has journeyed across the hostile land and is now taking Eryxala Castle. We take Cyrenea and the Southern Empire have retaken the rebel town of Makeb. In the Battle of Melin Castle, the defenders are so vigilant in their defence that they throw a rock at me so hard that I glitched through a wall. We still take it, as well as Karinia Castle. Akisa Castle is under siege, and we lose it after taking Phycaron. Cyrenea is now under fire, but it seems the defenders repelled the invaders before we got there. We take Shinopsis Castle, as Melian Castle and Sinan are again under attack. This time, two ally armies go to aid the town, so we busy ourselves in reclaiming Melian Castle. We take back the castle, and our allies take Nine Lords prisoner in their fight. The war with Princess Platerade's Southern Empire has lasted 88 days so far. That's just over one year. They have 3,900 total troop strength, but 12 properties to defend. We take Mazia and Gaos Castle, as Nulder's Castle takes Epinosa Castle. Makeb rebelled a second time. Our next conquest was Jugaris Castle, Atrian Castle, Lokana Castle, and the bloodshed went as far as Amprella, where we got the merciful trait. Just before that battle, we welcomed our seventh child into our family, Camel the Ninth. There are now four fiefs left to take, Siratos Castle, Uzek Castle, then Tepez Castle. The war is almost over. We have 63 noble prisoners captive and have inflicted twice as many casualties as they have. Kesar Castle is the last to take and on the 19th day of winter, 1100, the Southern Empire have been totally vanquished. In a brief moment of peace, I look at the map. Only one faction remaining, the Northern Empire, led by Frederick Jensen. I've never seen this before, but as we leave the rebel city of Balticund, the Rebellion clan was recruited into the Northern Empire. I had just bought all the food there and was about to lay siege to it, but I'll have to wait until the main war now. I take the rebel city of Makeb instead, where a carefully thrown Jareed connects with our comrade Luke, knocking him unconscious. We have 335 spaces in our army, so we'll go on another recruitment drive before declaring war on our final foe. When we were ready, we marched halfway across the map towards Sinopia. Just before we reached the gate, in perfect timing again, Frederick Jensen declares war on us. Interestingly, he overestimates his value in the world as he prices peace at 145,000 denars a day. Not that I'm interested though. I continue straight for Sinopia, 
and fight in a 1134 versus 987 where I land a 39 hit on a Gashot and take the town suffering only 11 losses. Remtoil Castle is under siege and we've lost Varsheg. It has only been 8 days and it has already become a volatile war. During the siege of Varagos Castle, I was busy breaking shields when my horse wandered aimlessly into the fray. Another carefully thrown Jareed accidentally connects to her, making her lame. We lost 5 and killed 467. 16 castles to go. Balgard is under attack, but we march for Atakonia Castle. We lost Balgard and now Hertagia Castle and Veron Castle are under attack. Looking at the war report, we have each taken 3 properties from the other. We made it in time to save Hertagia Castle, lost Verin Castle but retook it. We took Remsoil Castle and find Frederick Jensen himself attacking Hertagia Castle. We have four times the men he has but he did not surrender and is captured by Keichi. Sionan is next and we catch up to an army of nine lords leading a force of 1011 who drew swords against our 1069. I have never seen weather quite like this, a pitch black thunderous crimson sandstorm. It was so dark, I was rendered useless, but I still had a good victory, losing 71 of our total force. We then took Gersogus Castle, but lost Sienan. 15 to go. We intercepted a small force of 512. I almost let them pass, as they are so insignificant, but there were 10 lords leading them, so I engaged, capturing them all. I never get much battle loot from battles this size, but on this occasion, a goggled cataphract helmet was dropped, worth 48,000 Danars alone. Allies had taken Flintog Castle and we found a small army of five lords, chased them into Uthalane Castle and hammered the town with fire shots. Before breaching the walls we had taken out 811 defenders and I ordered the charge and we took the castle, zero losses on our side. A new membership was purchased so I cut off Frederick Jensen's head to make room for the new Emperor Darrow, the newest channel member and leader of the Northern Empire, the last resistance of the Haradrim and enemy of the Wraith. Ignore his women's clothes. I had to change the gender from female to male, but I thought he looked fabulous. Thanks to the execution, I lost the honest trait, but kept the merciful. Uthalane Castle is under siege, but Yamina repels the attack while Matthew Knoll sets up a siege camp at Cranarug Castle and takes it as we take Ov Castle. We have taken Varsheg, but lost it again. Emperor Darrow makes his debut appearance on the battlefield, scoring a victory against Matthew Knoll, taking a total of 8 of our lords prisoner in one foul swoop. When we take Balgard, we spot that Varsheg repelled against its empire invaders. They can take land from us, but they cannot keep it, it seems. We meet Emperor Darrow for the first time. He is attacking Ov Castle with a large army with 16 other lords and still has our imprisoned allies. My 17 years of experience as a commander was no match for this new blood. 992 versus 1166 and we conquered our foe, rescuing our captive lords. I entered Ov Castle but lost all our prisoners from that battle as I had given the castle away to Yamina and I don't have access to the prison here. We shall meet again Darrow. Spring 1102. We have 35,000 troop strength against the Northern Empire's 5,000. In the 61 days of war, we have acquired 77 prisoners and drawn them back to 10 properties. In one month, we take Takor Castle, Omor, Varsheg and Mechalovia Castle. We had lost Uthalen Castle but reclaimed it with the assailants inside. Pravus gets a 25 hit Onaga shot, killing 166 himself. I also made the most amount of kills I have ever achieved this battle too, with 329. Our income is over 200,000 dinars per day, mainly due to the state monopolies policy. We have not struggled with money once this run, and we have amassed almost 60 million dinars. Epicrotia, Resource Castle, Diathma, Argaron. One tal remaining. So far, we have inflicted 24,000 casualties versus their 11,000 and currently hold 93 prisoners. I set up the siege camp at Baltikund, the final frontier of this world, and on the ninth day of winter, 1102, after the last fight of Calradia, we won. The Northern Empire are defeated, and there are no other kingdoms left to oppose us. I sold the 100 prisoners we ended up with for 138,896 stainars and disbanded the army after almost two decades. There is one final task I must complete. I will not coexist with any former leader. I am hunting down Darrow. 
attract him from Asalig to Esme, but that British Mo got to him first. I took him from his cell in Orton Guard and snipped off his head. This was the fourth instalment in my Bannerlord World Conquest series. This was the most seamless run so far, and I did not think the Asari troops would be as capable as they were. Thanks to videos like these, I'm playing with factions I normally wouldn't use. There were no companion deaths this run. Normally, my runs are played with them, but they hardly got a mention. So please give the video a like and a subscribe to salute these desert heroes. Heyo, the infantry captain. I'm Mutton, the archer captain. Luke, Keichi, Brutal Pravis, that British Mo, and Gazorbo, the party leaders. Griff Gaming, I'm not even sure what he did. Matthew Knoll, clan leader of the Banu Rawaid. Jonathan Abrams, Khan of the Cusade. Frederick Jensen and Darrow, Emperors of the Northern Empire, Platerade, playing as Princess Platerade, Empress of the Southern Empire. Max Grumpy, you got a membership during the editing of this video, but you'll get your character next run. The link to become a member is in the description. Join the Discord to stay up to date and connected, and I'll see you in the next one.